Hello, ladies and gentlemen, Holotide here, and we're gonna talk about something that I think is a big indication of where gaming is going and where gaming currently is. And that is the I don't wanna I don't wanna be too harsh, but it's the failure of Concord. I truly feel like this game has created a fork in the road for people, hopefully for, you know, developers and studios, and will make them reevaluate how they approach games in general. I hope that developers who are currently working on games right now see this and maybe take a step back and ask themselves if what they're making and what they are doing and how they are monetizing their games is correct. That being said, if you enjoy this video, make sure you leave a like. If you're new to the channel, make sure you subscribe. We're trying to hit 15,000 subscribers so that I can retire from my job and open up a farm for dogs where I can take care of like 100 puppies. That's my dream. Anyways, so I'm gonna keep it real. I didn't play Concord. I will say that I was interested in it. I'm not huge into hero shooters, but I did see some clips from the PvP and it looked okay. I have friends who did play it and they actually enjoyed it. But I feel like this has like hit some type of nerve with the gaming community and that being live service games, things of that nature. But if you didn't know, Concord was basically, you know, shut offline. PlayStation is going to give refunds to everybody that bought it. They said that they're going to determine the best path ahead. And I think that that means that the game is not going to be completely dead. I can't imagine that they would throw, uh, what was it, almost $200 million at this game and eight years just to end it in like two weeks. So I think the game will go free to play. I think they'll open it back up and um, they'll try to make some type of money off of it from there. But what this game kind of shows is that even with all this money behind it, all these years, is that there's really no game that's too big to fail now. And that makes me nervous about things like Marathon, you know, all these other games that are in development for half a decade and these trends have kind of just ended and they're releasing their games and they're like, oh, this is not going great. Now, Sony wants live service games. It's what they bought Bungie for. You know, they really want to make a splash in that market. And it kind of seems like we're, we might be exiting that phase for people. The thing with Concord is that I don't think that it had anything that it was like super special in or super unique with. And I think today you need a massive hook to get people into your game. Unless it's an established IP, something like Marvel, you really need something that shakes it up. Look at Hell Divers 2 because that game was literally out of nowhere and people loved it. Now, recently, not so much, but that kind of goes back to our developers and studios, these people in charge of making these decisions. Are they really in tune with what the greater gaming population want? The thing with Concord was it was also a paid release. It wasn't free to play to, to come out, which is weird because that space is basically dominated by free to play games. And in today's age, if you are an average game or a below average game, you're just, there's so many other opportunities and so many other games around for people to play that you're just gonna be out of luck. Now, I do feel Concord may have suffered from the online vitriol that people were like, this looks terrible. They talk about the game being like woke and the character designs and stuff like that. There was just so much negativity around it and not a lot of good PR or even content creators playing the game or talking about the game. And I feel like that's a huge missed opportunity for marketing dollars. You really need to have some type of large content creator pushing your, your game at this point because if everybody's just talking trash about it or saying they're not gonna play it or they're not interested, then I feel like a lot of the potential players are just gonna say the same thing, especially when you have to pay money to play the game. There have been analysts saying that the game sold around 25,000 units, a 697 peak concurrent player count on Steam. And I just feel like having all that negative press just made people super like it almost becomes a meme at that point where they aren't going to play the game on principle because they want to see how bad it can get i don't know it's a weird psychological thing 
But I think the apathy that was directed towards the game ultimately led in its demise. And that's, you know, it sucks for the developers, sucks for the studio. I am 158% sure that there are people that love that game in that studio, that loved working on it, that are proud of it. And they just had that dream ripped away from them. And that part does suck. There are people there that have put close to a decade of their life into making it. But is this like the the crossroads where studios are going to be like, okay, maybe live service isn't the go-to off-rip. Maybe we need to establish our IP, establish a game, establish a universe that people want to, you know, play and enjoy and then pivot to live service stuff. With microtransactions kind of coming to a head and people being extremely vocal about that. I really do feel like we're we're at a crossroads at this point and games that are in development right now are gonna have to make some really hard decisions going forward because if you are you know kind of stuck in the past i mean i feel like if concord had released two years ago or something it would have been fine you know if it released in the pandemic when you know people were just staying at home playing games and stuff and could have built a following there maybe maybe it would have been successful but now you have to come out of the gate, not just swinging, but like throwing knockout punches, doing everything you can to, to create a fan base of loyal players. You got to make the game fun. People aren't dumb anymore. I feel like the generations coming up playing games now are less stupid, <laughs> if that makes sense. Like they're, they're not as easily tricked into buying skins and stuff. And I feel like it's just, I, I hope that it's a crossroads where the gaming climate gets better but that's going to do it for the video ladies and gentlemen it was kind of a long one so i hope you stuck around if you did make sure you leave a comment down below telling me how you feel i read every comment if you enjoyed the video make sure you leave a like if you're new to the channel make sure you subscribe and i'll catch you guys around the ring peace